Hello, my name is Matthew Markwit, and welcome to the first video in the Unreal Tournament for Creation uh, Basics. Uh, in this particular video, we're going to talk about how to download, install the Unreal Tournament 4 uh, program. Uh, we're also going to talk about launching it, getting into the editor, and some of the basic movements, weapons, uh, items, and health. So let's get started. Now I'm going to assume that you guys have already downloaded and installed the Epics Game Launcher, as you can see here. Um, if you actually go to the UT tab, once you've been logged in and installed, you'll see that you have three little sections here, Play, Create, and Marketplace. Now, Play is where you can actually play the, the game itself, right? I've already uh, downloaded it, so it will say Launch, but if you haven't, you need to download it. Uh, create is where you get your special editor, which is a separate editor than the Unreal Tournament, or Unreal Engine 4 editor, I should say. Uh, and then you can download that too. I actually have it running here in the corner so that I don't have to spend the time to launch it when we need to get into it. And then lastly is the marketplace where you can uh, buy some stuff. And there are actually some free levels. I would even suggest downloading those because any of the content within those levels you can use uh, after you've downloaded them. All right, so let's actually jump in the game first. I want to talk about a couple of things in the game. So this is the next section uh, right here that I want to talk about. So we're going to talk about your basic training and your training videos. All right, I'm going to hit launch here, and it actually loads up pretty quick if you've already loaded it up on your computer and haven't restarted. So here we are. Wait for it to pop up. Okay, so there's this big little box that says big little yeah there's a big box right here that says basic training right we can click on that um, also you can come up here and click on learn which will uh, redundantly have basic training here um, but also training videos now the training videos I don't recommend watching them through the editor I will give them in the description below so that you can uh, click on those and watch them that way instead uh, they'll go into more detail than I do about each weapon each item in the game uh, each movement and just like strategies and how you can play the game better uh, it's really important that you understand the game in order to design a good level for it. So I do recommend that you go into the game, you play it, and we go to basic training. Basic training, as we can see here, is a set of tutorials. Uh, each of these tutorials will have a little token at the end of them. Once you get all the tokens, you can see right here, you collect them. Uh, what I really want you guys to do in order to understand the game well is I want you to at least do the first three, which is movements, weapons, and pickups. However, Deathmatch is also a good one uh, to jump into to kind of get a feel for how the game should run uh, once you're done. Now, there is a Team Deathmatch, a Capture the Flag, and Duel, but I don't uh, expect or want you guys to necessarily do those, but you can do them for fun if you want. All right, so I'm going to jump out of the game here. Okay, and so as our screen pops back here, all right, we're going to talk about the creation um, uh, section here. So once you launch the editor, you will get this. By default, it will load up into what is known as your example map. This here is the example map. There's a lot of content in here. I'm going to show you around a little bit. Okay, uh, so like I said, we're going to talk about now the example map and understanding some of the other maps that are here in the editor. So if you actually go up to the top where it says File, and open level whoops we'll go here open level you can kind of see this uh, this gives you a list of all of the levels that you can download or not download but uh, load up and use as examples or to understand how this engine works or sizes or things like that so anything with ctf in front of it is a capture the flag map well anything with dm in front of it is a death match now there are uh, test levels uh, in here too, if you click on test levels or WIP, which is work in progress. So there are work in progress levels of a bunch of other people who are trying to uh, contribute to the Unreal Tournament game. And there's a ton of them. Uh, it might be a while. Like if you try to go through a lot of these, it will take you a really long time. Uh, most of them do uh, load up uh, after a long time too, especially if your computer's slow. So uh, be sparing with how many of them you're opening or testing out. But it does, once again, help to understand how things are done. But uh, just so you remember, the uh, file structure here to get to the example map is content, okay, restricted assets, and maps. And you can see it right here, which is example underscore map. So if you ever start your own level, right, uh, or open up another level, you can always get back to this example one by going here and then hitting open. Now we're already in it, so I'm just going to cancel out of this. All right, so let's talk about your basic movement within the editor, uh, or within not just the editor, but in the game. So we should already know how to move around in an editor. Uh, if we've been watching the other videos that I've done for Unreal in general, it's the same as, uh, as uh, the Unreal Engine 4. 
right? But I'm talking about moving around within the game itself. So if I actually right click in here and go play from here, I can spawn in this location. And the cool thing about this particular uh, map is that it does give you a lot of units. It'll let you know things like 500 units for this column. Uh, 250 units wide so that you can uh, determine how uh, large uh, you can make things, uh, how high a jump is, and so on and so forth. And I'll show you some of that. But any typical first person shooter has your WASD, so W to go forward, S to go backwards, A to go left, and D to go right. Um, if you press the space bar, you can jump. If you press the space bar twice while next to certain objects, you can double jump bump them. Uh, and then, of course, we have other things such as dodge. Dodge is fairly simple. If you double tap in any direction, so double uh, tap W, I jump forward, backwards, S, right, and so on, right? So if you double tap, you can dodge. That is actually a 750 unit distance or 750 centimeters. If I get to the edge here and I double tap forward, you can see I can actually dodge across. I didn't jump, I just dodged. Now we have what is known as a wall dodge, which is a thousand units. Okay, so the wall dodge is if you jump into a wall and then double tap away from it. So this particular wall is on my left, so if I double tap D when I jump into it, I can do a wall dodge to get to the other side. So let's test that. And you can see right there, just bounce off the wall and then land on this other section here. Now, the last thing I wanted to talk about as far as just your basic moving is your wall run here. Uh, and it has an angle. It shows you this is the angle in which a wall run can be done. But if you jump and hold a jump into the wall, you will, you will do the what is known as a wall run. So let's try this. So I'm just holding down space bar and you can see I can just pretty much run infinitely uh, for as long as that wall is. Okay, This little mini wall down here is also that so you can test it if you have trouble getting back up here. Okay, so, um, and I did say that was the last thing, but I did remember there is one last movement right here is your crouch. So if you hold control, you can crouch, right? And I can walk under things like this. But if you crouch while running, you'll slide. So if you're just normally moving, and then I press the crouch button, you can see right there, you can slide and slide underneath uh, a, uh, a little section right here, which is 125 units high. Okay, so um, right here it also shows you basic jumps. So most things that you want the player to jump up to without having to double jump is 100 units. All right, pretty easy there. Uh, 150 is the kind of jump uh, mantle on they call it. So like it gives that, that little pause as you get onto it. Uh, the last one needs to be double jumped, which is 200 units right there. And then lastly, they have the 250 unit, which is the one you can't jump onto, but you can use like a 150 unit crate to get up it as such. Okay, so I'm not going to cover the rest of the stuff. You guys can run around here and explore the different sizes of the windows and things like that. But the next thing I wanted to talk about is weapons. So I'm going to come over here to where they have all of the weapons and such. And you can see them all lined up right here. So let me jump out of the game for a second so that we can update this section here. So yeah, we're going to talk about weapons. I'm going to cover this whole section here. All right, and you might notice that I talk about a weapon. I also will show the name of the, uh, the weapon itself and then the name of the ammo that can be picked up too. If we take a look in the engine, you'll see that they have ammo all placed here, and then here's the weapons. Now, in order to put a weapon into the game, it's pretty simple. You actually put one of these in here, which is known as a weapon base. So if you go up to the top of your content layer, and right now, right here I have actually generic lift typed in there. I'm actually going to cover that a little bit later. But if we come in here and type in weapon, right, and then base all is one word, right, as we can see here, you can see that we will have a uh, generic weapon base that we can drag into the scene, which is this one right here, uh, the blueprint class. So if you drag this into the scene and let go, if it pops under the floor, just lift it up. Uh, and then if you use the hotkey end, it will pop it onto the floor or any BSP that you have there. So you don't have to get it perfectly lined up, just get it above the ground. Now, any weapon base can spawn, or I should say a weapon base can spawn any of the weapons. And there's actually nine different weapons that come uh, with this game. This particular weapon base has nothing, but the way you change that, if you look up here, right, is you go to details, weapon, and weapon type. So over here where it says details, if we look down here where it says weapon, you'll see weapon type by default set to none, but you can choose a whole bunch of different things to put in there. A lot of these don't necessarily uh, work. 
um, or don't work well. The nine uh, main guns I actually have right here. Now, yeah, there are some insta-gib, which is like in one-hit kill and things like that. Um, but I would avoid those in your maps. Uh, it's more fun to have all the different weapons as opposed to that because that becomes a little OP if you can pretty much kill anybody with one shot. Uh, so your main basic weapons are the ones that are kind of scattered here, and I've even put the names here. All right, so let's take a look at each one by jumping in the game again. So I'm going to play from here. Now this one I didn't put anything on, so it doesn't load up if you actually don't uh, set something. So the first one I want to talk about is your Bio Launcher, and the name's right here. So Bio Launcher is actually a new one to the series. If you've actually used it before, it's a variation of the Bio Rifle. So let's pick it up and see what happens. So you pick this one up, and we'll switch over to it. Basically, it shoots like grenades. That explode. I just don't want to talk when it's making too much noise. Uh, then if you actually right... It kind of gets this blob, you know, the longer you wait, the bigger it is, and you shoot it. It kind of lands, sticks to stuff, and creates these little kind of um, uh, extensions that if you run into, you get hurt. Now, after a little bit, it ends up just resetting. It's uh, kind of disappearing, as you can see there. So let's take a look at the bio rifle, which is the normal gun of the, of the two. This one shoots like this. Uh, they just stay there for a couple seconds and then blow up. If you run over them, they, you hurt yourself or anyone else who runs over them. It also has the exact same alt where if you right click, it does this. But when you let go, it will just hit a giant blob and then kind of sit there. It doesn't create those little extensions. So that's kind of the difference between those two. Um, as I said before, the names you see on the side. That's loud. Um, so, yeah, uh, but you'll see the names on the side. Okay, and then the names of the actual uh, ammo will also, we, these pickups right here, these are two different pickups that are for bio uh, weapons, but the names of those you can just type into your uh, content browser below and drag those into the scene. Okay, um, so then we have the flak cannon, which is this weapon right here. Flak cannon uh, primary, this is basically your shotgun, uh, but you shoot it and it will bounce off um, anything, pretty much people, other things like that. Um, and then it has its alt fire, which is a grenade that blows up and then shoots uh, shrapnel everywhere. Okay, it's one of my favorite guns. Then there's the link gun. Link gun, if we switch over to link gun here. Um, all right, here we are. Uh, main fire is this. The alt fire is kind of a beam. And if you use the beam, you actually shoot a teammate with the beam and they have a link gun. Uh, they get stronger when they shoot their gun. And then if you link it to another person, they'll get stronger. So that's why they call it a link gun because you can link it between different players on the same team and kind of create this really like strong death ray. Um, all right, so let's talk about the mini gun, which is over here. So one on the end. You guys should know what a mini gun is. But yeah, your primary fire is what you'd expect. But your all fire shoots out shards. Uh, that if you touch, uh, you get hurt. You can even use them to actually jump to get up higher places. But it does, as you can see there, it does hurt you. Okay. Um, so that is your minigun. Then there's the Redeemer, which, to be honest with you, you should never have more than one in a map. And in most cases, you shouldn't have one at all. But it is the most OP of the weapons. It only shoots once. Okay. If you shoot it normal, it'll just shoot out like a, it looks like a giant rocket. But then it blows up with a giant explosion, killing anything in it. But uh, with your primary... I don't want to do that because it won't load up again, in, uh, but I'll do with the right click, which you can see right here, you can actually direct it. So if you're standing somewhere, you can direct it. Of course, your player will be just sitting there so someone can come in and kill you while you're directing the, um, the Redeemer, uh, but it is pretty fun to uh, kill people with that. Uh, then we have the rocket launcher, which is right here. Main rocket launcher, if you shoot, does what you expect. So it shoots rockets that way. Alt click does a couple of things. So which is the uh, I should say alt fire, not alt click, but alt fire, which is right click. So you'll see it actually loads up three of them and shoots three in a row. If you actually right click and while it is loading, press the left click. It will shoot out grenades. 
and you'll even see it say grenades when you click on it. So, uh, and then if you hold the gun on somebody for a while uh, with the little reticle and then shoot, um, it will heat seek uh, the players also uh, with this weapon. So it tends to be a pretty OP weapon too. Sniper rifle, uh, self-explanatory. Right, right click to zoom in, uh, left click to shoot. All right, and then lastly is your shock rifle. Shock rifle is pretty fun to use too, right here. So a normal shot is a beam, such as that. If you right click, you shoot a sphere, energy sphere. However, if you use both of them, so I shoot an energy sphere and then shoot it with the primary click, it blows up and absolutely just annihilates anybody or anything inside of it. Um, so there you go, there's your basic weapons and how they work. Uh, and then once again, here are the ammo. Okay, so I'm gonna pop out of this for a second here. Um, so that's how the weapons work. So let's finish off by talking about power-ups and health. Power-ups are anything other than health and weapons, um, and there are a couple of different things right here. You can see them lined up. Power-ups are all drawn out by using the power-up base. So if you type in power-up base down here instead, right, so we'll type that in all as one word, and you pull in the power-up base. Okay, same thing, you can lift it up, hit N to snap it to the ground. Okay, this one's a little different. Instead of weapon, it's called inventory, and then you go to details, inventory, inventory type, and you can choose between a whole ton of these. Now, some of them don't work properly. Some of them are just kind of test stuff. So I put down all the ones that you want or need to know over here. Okay, so here they are. I'm going to highlight this section now since we are talking about the power-ups. Okay, so uh, the first one is your armor chest, which is 100 armor. Okay, so you have 100 health when you start and no armor. When you pick up armor, it adds on top of your health, but it is a separate thing. Once your armor's gone, then you'll start losing your health. So you can see right here that uh, this one, and this is once again in alphabetical order, not by strength. Uh, but this one, if you set it to uh, armor underscore chest, this thing will give you 100 armor when you pick it up. Then there is the helmet, okay, which is this one. All right, and when you pick this one up, this one gives you 20 armor. There is the thigh pads, which will give you 50 armor, right? And then lastly is the shield belt, which is this one, which gives you 150 uh, armor. So there are your four different armor classes. Okay, you can have up to 100, or I think it's 199 or 200 armor. Uh, then you have your different uh, um, base. These are the power-ups. Uh, these were your armor, but these are the power-ups. There's berserk, invisibility, U damage, and jump boots. So let's take a look at these. Okay, so this one here is the invisibility. And keep in mind that most of these, especially the extra powerful ones, have a timer on them. So once you start, and you can see right here, there's a respawn timer, and you can have a, a delayed spawn. So uh, on or off, right, when you're clicking these. So if I click on this, you know, you, it, they are by default set to delayed spawn. So if I was to play, you'll see right here that a lot of these, because they're pretty powerful, you can't pick them up yet. The only one you can pick up instantly is the jump boot. So keep that in mind. Each one has a different spawner. Right, but invisibility is kind of what it sounds like. You get 30 seconds of invisibility. Not full invisibility, but, but uh, pretty close. Okay, you damage, which is basically 30 seconds of double damage. So you pick that up and it's especially overpowering too. Uh, if you get you damage and berserk at the same time, the game will actually say Titan, um, which means that uh, you have, uh, you're super powerful because you're double damage. And berserk, what that does is it fills up all of your ammo again for all your weapons, plus it lets you shoot, I believe, at a double uh, rate uh, as normal. Uh, so it is pretty ridiculous. Now, if you're going to add any of these types of things, such as your Berserk, your U damage, your invisibility, um, I would only do a maximum of one per level. Uh, definitely do not do more than one, and in some cases, don't do all three of them, too. It just kind of seems ridiculous when you have, like, redeemers and all these extra things in your level. Uh, try to spread out items uh, sparingly. Now, the last one is the jump boots. They're pretty fun. You grab the jump boots, and you get three super jumps. So if you double jump in the air, so if I jump, it's fine, right? But if I jump again while in the air, you do a super jump. And so you can totally break the game uh, if you don't uh, create a map that allows or doesn't allow players to go flying out of the world. Um, so be careful with the jump boots because, like I said, it could totally break design. Um, but those are basically uh, how you use uh, those. Now I'm going to jump out of the game again here. All right, so those are your items. Lastly is health. Okay, 
So we're going to talk about health here. All right. Now, health, there's three types of health. And as I said before, you start off with 100 health. Um, now, these healths right here, which are your, and I put down the names of them, health medium, you'll type that in there, and health large and health small. Okay. So these are your health mediums. All right, these give you 25 health, but they don't stack above 100. So say you only have 90 health, you pick this up, you'll go to 100. However, the other two types of health do stack over, and you can go all the way up to 199 health, which means if I have 100 health and I pick up one of these health vials, or they call them health small, underscore small, it'll give me 5 health, so I'll have 105 health. I pick up another one, 110, and so on. Uh, this one is a super health, which if you pick up, gives you 100 health. Uh, and it does overstack. So if you already have 100 health, it'll give you another 100, or in this case, 99, because I believe you can't go over uh, that. Now, that's basically it uh, for what I wanted to talk about in this particular video. However, I do encourage you to play around in this map. Uh, they do have things like, you know, if you enter when you're in the game, you can spawn a bot. Uh, just make sure you pick up the weapons and all this stuff beforehand, because the bot will instantly run to those and just absolutely destroy you. But it does show other things like door actors, uh, jump pads, and elevators, which we'll talk about in a different video. Um, and uh, a lot of things like your uh, post-process volumes, lighting, and so on. So I do recommend kind of running around this world and getting to understand a little bit about how Unreal Tournament works. Um, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.